everybody. Welcome back to We Know You Know, a podcast about psych. Uh, today we are going to talk about season two, episode 14 of Psych. We are your hosts. I'm Barb, and with me is Matthew, as always. If you guys are enjoying the show, please remember to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. It means the world to us whenever we see our numbers go up, and it gives us that extra kick to to keep going and putting stuff in there when we know new people are listening and, and messaging. Yes. Whether it's Reddit, whether it's uh, Facebook, um, email. If you guys have questions about the show, if you guys have questions about things that you like or theories, send them in. As always, we're going to do a shout out to the official Psych Fanatics of Facebook group and the Psych subreddit group. Lots of our listeners come from those two groups, and we're so glad that you're here. Yep. And uh, also, you know, wrapping us out to other people in the group, I did actually see a few comments where people are asking about podcasts with the whole, uh, the new one that came out with uh, the, the psychologists are in. They're like, oh, I was looking for a new podcast. And people were like, yeah, you should check out this other one too. I saw it. That was nice. exciting. It was exciting. I'm Yay. glad people are sharing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for that. Wait, mm -hmm. I'm like, speaking of the psychologists are in podcast. I really have been enjoying listening to that. I think it's a nice companion because we're definitely different shows. I mean, ours is more like let's really deep dive into the episodes. And they, of course, have that different perspective of having the experience of being on the show. They don't go as much into the actual episode, like right. especially not like we do. They, they have a lot of uh, background information mm -hmm. um, as well as their perspective on things and from behind the scenes. So I definitely I, think that it, it's very easy to enjoy both, especially if you have like a long ride and they're, mm -hmm. we release on different, different days. So yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. What I think we're going to find is these questions that you and I always have about like, gosh, I wonder how that like came about. Yeah. They're talking about them. So yes. they're, they're, it's kind of nice, um, you know, the, the whole dynamic of, okay, well, we're asking the questions and they're answering them, not even knowing we've asked them. So mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. I think that'll be cool. And then today I happened to listen to uh, Rob Lowe's podcast. It's called Literally. And I, I have been listening to it since the beginning because I'm a Rob Lowe fan. But he had Dulé Hill on his podcast today that release so you guys will certainly be able to listen to it but he talked about psych on it and the dynamic between him and james Rodé rodriguez and like what a cool what a cool little information he talked about the wonder years and of course about west wing that he did with rob Lowe. but um you know interesting and and so now he a was a lot of psych or a little psych like how much of a the talk decent was amount of psych okay. because right. they oh, talked yeah. about the movie and they also talked about when he first started on Psych and how that whole thing came about, they kind of went through all the shows that he was on and how how he got them and, you know, the what the experience was like for him on all of them. And, of course, they talked about how cool it was that they filmed the pilot for Psych in 2005 and it's 2021 and they're still making movies yep, because of awesome. these awesome fans. Mm -hmm. And Rob Lowe was like, we need to get that started for, uh, for, um, for a different show that they, that he had worked on for grinder, uh, with Fred Savage. He's like, can we just start that whole thing? Maybe the fans will do that like they do for psych. So there was really a lot of shout outs to the fans. So I would suggest you guys listen to it. His Rob Lowe's podcast is pretty cool. He's got a lot of great people on there, you know, having been in this business for so long, there's really good, good guests on it. So yeah, anyway, really check cool. it out. Yep. All right. So let's jump into this week's episode. This week, we're talking about Dislodged, episode 14 of season two, and it first aired on February 1st, 2008, and the writer was Steve Franks and Tim Meltrigger, and the director was Mel Damsky. Barb, do you have any info on them? Of course I do. Steve Franks, we clearly know who he is. Tim Meltrigger, I, I was actually found this really interesting. The only writing credits in his resume are for Psych. Uh, he also wrote the web episodes or webisodes of Psych and The Big Adventures of Little Sean and Gus. That was like the cartoon thing. Mm. And then he has one other show called Swedish Dicks on there that he wrote. Nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> it's like all Psych. <laughs> Which I thought was interesting because usually the writers have like this long list of things that they wrote on. Not Tim Meltrigger. 
The director was Mel Damsky. He directed 23 episodes of Psych and goes all the way back to Spelling Bee. I mean, like, he's been around the show for... He 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 did a lot on the show, a lot of directing. So we're we're familiar with him already as well. Okay, Matthew, do you have a synopsis for this episode? Yes. <clears throat> so a death takes place during a ceremony at a local lodge in Santa Barbara. We find out that Henry was once a part of this lodge, and the guys are curious about his time there. Lassiter also has a connection to this lodge that is not as friendly. Sean ends up joining the Lodge to find out who the culprit is, and they all have to work together to uncover the truth. So, this one, as we mentioned, was one that we didn't really remember much about. And, you know, let's, let's get into it. We'll, we'll go through the details. Okay, we uh, open this episode with a flashback of young Sean and Gus sitting in the middle of Henry's living room with like a sheet over them. Like they've made this little like fort thing and they've got a grill with a fire in the middle of this room and they're chanting. And apparently Henry, well, Henry comes in and apparently they're starting a club. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that the rules to this club cracked me up first. There are no girls. Everyone has to be under 12. No old guys. <laughs> they have to be under 12. No old guys. That hurt me just a little bit. Anyway. And then Gus says he, they have to have a love of correct grammar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when they fight about that and Sean walks away and Gus goes, go ahead. I don't need you and your misprepositions. <laughs> And your misplaced prepositions. <laughs> Sorry, misplaced. Wow. Sorry, I wow. was too excited about it to read it right. Misplaced well, no, preposition. Uh, I thought, it, it, yeah, I thought it was funny because they had a real attitude. He's because Sean was like, <laughs> "I don't want to be in a club with I don't I, I don't want to be in a club with this." And then he gets up and like walks away. And then Gus, he has some oh, he's like, "Fine, I don't need you and your misplaced prepositions." And I then he's asked Henry if he wants to join. <laughs> and Henry's face when he said that was just like, ugh. Mm. not good it was a clear no yeah i do like that mm -hmm. yeah that was a funny little op opening although it does it's I don't, this this is a theme with this one mm -hmm. that i don't quite get and it feels like they don't go all in on the you know we'll, we'll get into it a little bit later i thought this was weird though how they were doing the chanting thing over the fire for a club i don't know i thought like the intro well was, i think they were just trying to make a ceremony of some sort yeah, you know? I don't know. There's like something that happens thing. later on in this episode that I'll talk about it then. Okay. But um, yeah, there, there's okay. a theme issue with this episode that's kind of weird for me. But um, well, yeah, we're back in present day. Yes, back in present day. And I I really like this one scene. This may be my favorite scene in this episode. When, <laughs> when Sean and Gus are sitting at that little cafe and he's like, Sean's like, yeah, one phone call and my trip is off with my dad. They're not going to the mountains anymore. And, and Gus is, you know, like, what happened? And he's like, well, he's not feeling well. And then... Here comes Henry in his truck. He's got bad, bad Leroy Brown playing in the on the radio, and he's just having a good old time. And mm -hmm. Gus, <clears throat> excuse me, Gus gets such a kick out of it that Henry has lied to Sean. I thought that was so funny how he got such a kick out of that. Yeah, yeah, he liked it because mm -hmm. yes. his dad was blowing him off. I uh, yeah, two things in particular I really liked about this this little opener was um, when he said that he sounded pale. And he's like, how do you sound pale? And he's like, I don't know, but he definitely sounded feverish. It was just a, a silly little Seanism that I really like that they included. They they filled that time with, with Sean. I like that. Yeah. And I also liked how Sean also said that it's amazing how like one phone call can just improve your whole day. <laughs> he's like, my like dad's sick and can't go on the man trip, like this like camping trip. I, I thought that was funny too. Yeah. Uh, but well, after this, they somehow they manage to uh, pay for the food, get out to the car, and follow. After they saw Henry pull away, they somehow managed to follow him. I yeah, want to call. Split. I want to call eh on that, but I'm just going to overlook it because it's a minor detail. But yeah. Well, they have to keep the show moving. There has they to be. They somehow managed you know. to follow Henry without right. any idea of where he was going. 
But they and end up Henry, him. the seasoned observational cop, didn't catch them following him. That's true too. Good point. But uh, they end up following him to the Monarch Lodge, uh, mm-hmm. which is like this uh, club that's filled with. I guess it's supposed to. It, it looks like they're trying to go for rich and powerful people. Um, mm-hmm. and they are people watching with a from afar. Stature. Yeah. And one thing I noticed is when they're watching from the car at the like at the the building when they see Henry go in, Gus stole the cup yes. from the restaurant. He had like, like a, a cup bowl. of like yeah, he had like a little bowl, like, like a hand bowl full of for sauce. He stole the cup. He just like I'm taking this with me, and I'll see you guys later. And I uh-huh. thought that was funny. And then he hands it to the security guard. Yeah. Yeah, after they like, do the little handshake. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, that's the thing. To get into the Monarch Lodge, you have to know the secret handshake. And Sean just watches his dad do it and then goes and repeats it. And they get in and, okay. They're walking I think you have, the same, there. you have the same note as me. Yeah, they're walking <laughs> through there and they're looking the at Monarch all the Lodge. portraits. Oh, no, that's not what I was talking about. I was, I was oh, just skipping oh, that a little bit. Okay. okay. No, um, uh, before, like, when Sean gets out of the car to, like, to go in, uh-huh. um, Gus like yells out the window, like you can't get in there. They're a clandestine society. Yes, that's a very I don't know. That's, that was very wordy and weird to say. It's funny you have um, you actually have a note in here too that I that I have for later in my in my pop culture references that they go in and they're looking at all these portraits on the wall and. There is one, and the and the guys say that looks like Chuck from the Wonder Years, and that is Chuck from the Wonder Years. It's Andy mm-hmm. Berman, who played on the Wonder Years um, in the first also iteration. A writer on of the it. show, right? Or yes, director? and he's a, he's a writer. Writer, a writer. writer. Okay. Yeah, he wrote on a lot of the a lot of the episodes, but um, but yeah, it was actually a picture of him. So, well, um, but Henry's another picture. Fun fact, another fun what? fact: all of the photos are cast members, or not cast members, crew members. And oh, people that's that work cool. on the show. And next to Henry, to the right, I believe that's Steve Franks. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Henry's was horrible. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. That's not about horrible. No, no, no. All the rest of the guys, all the rest of the people on the wall, right? They're yeah, in just like, like hardcore like, like stare dark going on. Suits. Okay, but they're in like dark suits. And they're like, you know, you can tell like they're they're just I don't know a certain way like stuffy and all this, and you get to Henry's and it looks like some bad disco photo like it was just it was bad. Miami Vice I think is what you're going for. No, pre Miami. Yeah, Vice. the white jacket on with the blue it was blue, blue collar and it was popped. Terrible. It was it popped was out, bad. fanned over. It was. I bad. think he was going for like awesome. I don't know what he was going for, but it was bad. I didn't like it. I I I was digging it. I liked it. Man, nah, I didn't like it. But um, let's see here. So guys, um, as the guys go past <laughs> there, they they uh, are they while they're looking at the painting, they hear Henry's voice in the other room. So they head into the other room, and they're like wading through these this uh, room filled with people that are all wearing these like purple cloaks. And we see Henry. He sticks There's out like, like hoods a and thumb, everything, sore thumb, and yeah, yeah, they're wearing hoods and stuff. It's very yeah. weird. And Henry's there in his normal clothes. No pineapples on his shirt this time. And there is also a dead body that he's standing over. Uh, we find out that Henry used to be a part of the lodge whenever the guys called or explained why they called him. Because he used to be a brother of theirs and because he used to be a cop. Well, clearly Henry is not happy that Sean and Gus are there. That's the main takeaway from this scene. He's not necessarily happy and the i i think he really just didn't want sean to know that he had ever been part of it well i don't know if it's so much that he didn't want him to know that he was a part of it i i think it was kind of what ends up happening i think he was worried about him like trying to be pulled into it oh okay yeah that, well, that's, that makes that's sense. I think because when he was angry at him he wasn't angry at him as in like other times where he just like didn't want to see him it was angry at him like he was like oh crap he caught me kind of thing or or well, yeah, he was trying to push him out. He was trying to push him out of the room. Yeah, yeah, and he tells him to yeah. stay away. So. He does tell him to stay away. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I see what you. I see. Yeah, I get that. But next, we get to see Lassie uh, and Juliet. Uh, they mm-hmm. are not even here yet. They're out on a call, and I thought this was a very weird and silly scene. Um, Juliet comes back, and she just got them coffee, and then that's when they get the call in the car 
that the that there was a body found and then when they list the address lassie like snaps into overdrive mm-hmm. like he gets oh we're going to that scene we're going to that scene right now he knows. and he throws the cup of coffee out the window that was so out of character for him to litter <laughs> so like that. weird beyond littering just you can set it in a cup holder like he was right. just so in in like engulfed in his excitement that yeah. he just lost control and threw the cup out I thought it was a very strange scene, but Juliet's reaction was kind of funny. <laughs> She's like, well, that's we littering, you know. Out, we do find out why, though, because he has wanted to be part of this group. So Yes, when he walks in, we get to see him, like the guys spot him as he comes in, and he's just like in awe, like looking around the entire room and everything in there. And he's got this big giddy smile on his face. And he's definitely, some. this is something that he's wanted to do. When Lassie and them are on their way over, this is also when Sean has noticed some things, uh, specifically on the the hood that the victim was wearing. He's noticed like some specks of like powder and, and on his on beard, on the, on and his on beard the beard as well. Right, like yeah. there's some transfer there. And Sean is telling Henry like this is definitely a murder, and that's when Henry starts getting nervous, kind of like what we mentioned before. He's he's trying to distance him from this place for some reason that we don't really know yet. But um, I love I I do like the next scene when Lassie and Jules walk in. Lassie's mm-hmm. looking around like he's at an amusement park. Like he is yeah. just thrilled. And the second he sees Sean there, he's like, hey, Spencer. And then he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's angry and he's shocked at the same time that Sean is here when he's been trying so hard to get here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, we also get to meet the guest star at this point for this episode. Um, as Lassie approaches uh, Sean and Henry and Gus, and he's like figuring out why they're here, that's when um, the uh, the guest star, uh, Philip Baker Hall, who is playing Irving Parker, walks over. And what do you know? It is Lassiter's ex-father-in-law. Well, so, technically still his father-in-law, but... Not for long. Soon to be. <laughs> soon to be ex-father-in-law. And he does not like Lassiter one bit. At oh, one no. point, he even go. He even says that he started a rumor that cops could not be members of the club. And that was literally just to keep Lassiter out, who he called... Um, that We made up that rule just to keep out undesirables. He literally made a rule barring police officers from it just to keep Lassiter out. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. It's rough. This guy just is mean throughout the whole episode, though. Like, I, not my favorite character by any means. After the interaction takes place between Lassie and his soon-to-be ex-father-in-law, Lassie pulls Jules aside, and he essentially tells her, we have to solve this case. And she's all worried about there being a conflict of interest and all of that because, you know, of his relationship there with him. But... He says, no, we've got to, I've got to be the hero here. I've got to do that. It's almost like he still wants to impress this man, even though the marriage is over and all that. He still wants to, he's got to be the hero. He's got to be the one to do it. Yeah. And that contradicts completely what, uh, or that, that that kind of falls in line with uh, Henry wanting the guys to stay away from this and just let the cops Mm -hmm. handle it. So, you know, Henry's not going to get it though, obviously. This well, is he all episode... but I mean, like he literally orders Sean mm-hmm. stay away from this Sean. I'm telling you, which is a surefire way to make sure Sean gets super involved. <laughs> of course, mm-hmm. but this is where uh, we get into what I was mentioning at the beginning of the episode, where things get a little weird with the the theme and like the tone of what this is supposed to be about. It, it feels almost as if it's like they they started it, but then didn't commit to this idea. They're back at the psych office, and Sean is on the computer, like, looking up information on this, like, society, this lodge. And they have some clip playing where it's, like, them, like, surrounding, like, a camera and, like, doing, like, chanting, Mm -hmm. by the power of Ra, by the power of Ra, like, summon the, like, it's this weird, like, witch cult thing, it sounds like. But then later on in the episode, all they talk about is essentially how these people are philanthropists. They're like ultra philanthropists, like donating clothes mm-hmm. and computers and like all that stuff to kids. And they don't also medical really services. Get, yeah. Right. They don't ever really get in like all of our interactions with the club members. None of them are like that. They're all just like dorky, essentially doctors and lawyers and dads and stuff that are 
just like a part of this club for some reason. Um, they don't ever really touch on this like culty thing again beyond the like weird hieroglyphs on their cloaks that they're wearing. Well, but we also don't know. We also don't know. We like we haven't seen like years past. So you know there are things like um, you know hazing rituals and stuff that go on with fraternities and all sorts of things that now don't happen to the degree that they used to. So you don't know how old. I mean, that I guess, but they should have. But... They should have mentioned that though. Like, well, they should have been, like, in the past, they've been, like, I don't know. I just feel like they, they wanted to go with this theme from the beginning scene with Sean so and Gus. where they're like misleading. Chanting. And, well, not, not misleading. I just feel like they didn't commit. It's like they walked to the edge, but then they didn't jump off. Like, they could have dove into this being, like, this weird, like, culty thing. Or they could have let it just be as this weird like dorky club for like adult men like i don't know they i felt like they went in the middle and they didn't really pick a side and they kept bouncing back between like well it certainly would have made more sense yeah philanthropic philanthropic Mm -hmm. it would certainly would have made more sense though um with henry's just sort of disdain for it like his his adamant attitude about Sean staying away from it, it would have made sense if it was more of that cult kind of environment. You know, if yeah, there was something like, like that going on. Never wanted part of it, and it didn't seem like Irving But he Parker may not have known, part, whereas Henry was already a member and he knew. I don't know. It would have made more sense. I think that would have been more interesting, is maybe mm-hmm. like Henry joins us and then he finds out they're doing some other stuff, but then he would have tried to stop it. So that could have gotten... I don't know. I don't know. I just felt like between the opening scene and between this this clip that they show us, it's like they're trying to say something else about this group, but then you never actually see anything like that right. in any of your interactions with the group or the lodge. I didn't like that. I thought it was weird. I don't know why they presented it that way, but I do know that 11 minutes, 30 seconds at the office, somebody's creeping around outside. It turns out that it's Lassie. And Lassie comes in basically telling these guys, I really need a favor. I need I need your help. Okay, so he basically is as asking the guys, Lassie's asking these guys, look, I really I need help. I can't pay you, but I need you to work this case. Mm-hmm. And even Gus is like as as the the station is the chief hiring us or whatever, and he's like, No, I am, but I can't pay you. Mm-hmm. I it's guess this would be a favor. And it, you know, of course, Sean takes that like at just this great thing. Like he's and Gus too. that Lassie needs help, you know? And th- this was my favorite. He says, Oh my gosh. He says, um, you're in a safe space, Lassie, surrounded by men who love you. And he goes, Gus, and Gus goes, Lassie, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Very sincere too. Mm. <laughs> okay, Lassie, and then in the, in this next scene, we find out or we see Sean do literally exactly what Henry told him not to do to the most uh-huh. extreme point. He joins the lodge. Like we get the clip of him turning around with the robe on, and he's like, "Welcome, our newest member." And it's yeah, exactly what Henry told him not to. I would you just like to point it. out. How I I just have to point out how adorable James O'Day <laughs> Rodriguez is in this scene. He is so cute. Wow. It's ridiculous. Sometimes, look, I don't know. Sometimes it's maybe a wardrobe thing. Sometimes it's like a certain uh, emotion he's trying to put across. But there are just times when he is just so adorable. It's so he's so cute. Again, mm-hmm. so just yeah. to. I think, yeah, we, I, one thing we did kind of cover over are some of the details of the case. So the victim, his name was Arthur Holstrom. Right. And he was in the middle of a ceremony to become like the high most, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't even remember what the, the word leader, was. The, the, the leader. The leader of the cult, essentially, yeah. or the, the lodge. And okay. there is, <laughs> the guys find out through investigations that they're supposed to go in order. From like the highest ranking, and then like there's the top five below him, right? Like all their pictures are one on the wall down, in the that order, right? 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 And yeah, if one leaves or you know dies or something, the next one in line replaces him. And they noticed that the um, Arthur Holstrom was like fourth in line, 
not second in line. So that opens up a clue or like an opportunity for them to investigate how did he skip all these people in line to become the highest like member of the, 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 the lodge. So that's where their first clue is. And uh, Lassie yeah. calls to check in with Sean and Gus to see how the investigation's going. And the guys find out that Lassie is staking them out and like following them. And he's got eyes on the lodge and they uh, end up, you know, surprising Lassie and uh, like telling him like, you know, we found you. Why are you following us? Well, okay. So it was just Sean mm-hmm. that did that. And mm-hmm. we've neglected to mention all this time that during the midst of finding the dead body, during the midst of the investigation, oh yes, Gus is so uh, Gus has completely Enamored. lost his mind because mm-hmm. here he is a pharmaceutical sales rep, and this group is made up predominantly of doctors. Yeah, it's like forty doctors in one. Yeah, room. and he's like, I've been trying to get appointments with these people. I'm so excited. Well, now he's got this in, so he has been just networking the whole time, right? Losing. Yeah, so he's he's smoozing he's schmoozing one of these doctors while Sean is talking to Lassie in the car. That is also in the beginning. In the beginning, he's like, "Oh, whenever you're talking to doctors, make sure you don't step on the dead guy." (laughs) That's what Sean said. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, don't step on the dead guy. I loved though how Gus is just he's everything else is gone. He's like, "I'm gonna sell these people pharmaceuticals." That's what his concern is. Now, when Sean does find Lassie, who has been sort of stalking him and and watching him, when Jules is on the phone, she does let them know that the tox report came in and that it shows something really odd. It shows that there were um, traces of Brazilian vine snake venom in this yeah. guy's blood. So now for sure, Sean is like, something's up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a weird one, and nobody seems to believe it. But this is another place where I felt really weird on this episode. <sighs> well, it's wait, literally wait, wait. a first, room full of doctors. How crazy is it that one of them has access to vine snake venom? Like, uh, well, it, that depends on what their work is. If they work in other countries, you never, you just don't know. But first, we have to discuss that Henry finds out about Sean joining the lodge. And he is mad. They're mm-hmm. at the, the psych office. He is mad about it. This is exactly what I told you not to do, Sean. You don't know what these people are. And da, 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 da. Well, then they tell him about the snake venom. And yeah, it's just. A, well, it, Henry it, gives them their next clue. Kind of. It's kind of obvious, but he gives them the next clue. Yeah. Um, essentially to check the next person in line to see if maybe they the killed him to get the, the next, the, like the leading chair. Yeah. And that next person happens to be Irving Parker. Uh, mm. That's Lassiter's, again, that's Lassiter's step, or no. Uh, We're just going to call him Lassie's father-in-law. Let's yeah. just call but him as Lassie's really father-in-law. really is soon to be ex-father-in-law, but yeah. Right. So that's Lassiter's father-in-law. And that, I mean, the guys don't really care about that, but that makes Lassiter very nervous later. Um, so they go and they head to his business which is an import export shipping company and not local shipping like to international Africa, to europe yeah international shipping uh, while the guys are there they do end up running into irving parker and they again every time we see this guy he's always aggressive and angry yes he is not happy that they're there at his job and he actually doesn't even like that Sean got in when his dad left the lodge. So they don't really they don't really get along and he essentially makes them leave. But while Sean's there, he does notice a bunch of like uh, airport codes from mm-hmm. like the Brazilian area. So Right, he just gets so rude with further, them though. I mean like he's he like, does. get out. He's like, just Although get I out of here. It. I I do I do get it. They're not friends. They don't know each other. They they happen to be in the same lodge, and Sean just joined. I, I get it. If somebody just showed up to my job, I'd be like, why are you here? Get, get out of here. But you at don't the same time, here. do you not think like, okay, well, that maybe made him look like he had a lot to hide? I, I don't. I, I don't. Because he didn't even know that they were investigating. Like, he literally just well, saw them. I mean, as that's true. He just was so rude. I, I don't know. I didn't think that he needed to be. 
I think but they could have handled that a different way. I don't like it. I believe this is when off screen Sean essentially calls Jules and lets him know mm-hmm. or lets her know about the connection because then Juliet brings in the father in law. And Lassiter now has to like psych himself up before he goes in to interrogate him. We we also find out around this time in the show that Gus has <laughs> appointments with four <laughs> four new doctors from the Lodge Network. He's just killing it. He is killing it sales wise right now. Mm-hmm. I love that. They are back at the station. That's when we see O'Hara bringing in the father in law, and Lassie is very taken aback. Yeah, he's literally talking to like Sean, saying it. It can't be Arthur. <laughs> It can't be him. It can be anybody but him. And Sean tells him he's the only suspect we have. And he literally tried mm-hmm. to hate me to death. He tried child. to hate me to death. Like I believe that he definitely <laughs> could have killed somebody else. Um, so yeah, that's a funny little funny little thing. That's a good quote. I uh, did notice too, like there, Jules well, Jules first of all tries there's a confrontation there between Jules and Lassie, because Lassie doesn't, he's like, who's going to, who's going to question him and all that. And Lassie's like, I have to do it. She says, mm-hmm. it's a clear conflict of interest. You can't be the one to do it. And he says, no, but I have to be. He's really got something to prove when it comes to this guy. Next, we get to see Sean getting his portrait done for the lodge. <laughs> like as a lodge member, he's getting it painted. And he he's said, like. <laughs> he said. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the paint adds 10 pounds <laughs> and he also says like can I put like Gus's head in the mouth of a puma in the back in the background and he's can like you put he's gotta be at my feet yeah and, and, the, and the painter is like only members get paintings so no <laughs> it was great that but was they really do funny. find out, they do actually get something from the painter, because they asked him, like, where we saw that they already took his painting down. Like, where did Arthur's painting go? And the painter tells him that they um, they took all of his belongings that were in the lodge back to his, his house, his home. And uh, they're waiting there to be picked up by some family member. So that gives the guy their next clue. They head over to Arthur's house to, you know, look around and see if they can find anything, any reason why somebody might have wanted to kill him. And Gus, after they, uh, you know, quote unquote, break in, Gus notices that the door is unlocked or he he questions Sean, like, I think it was unlocked. Was it already unlocked? And Sean, you know, doesn't really know. He wasn't really paying attention and he wanted to take credit for it, but he kind of blows it off. And the guys are searching around in the in his office, and one of them hears a window break. And mm-hmm. now they broke into a house that somebody else is breaking into, and they're in a bit of a predicament. And they have okay. this like silly game of like hide and seek for like Worst a minute and a half. Hiders ever. Yeah, Gus actually curled up, yeah, I, I, curled up in a chair. Yeah, I Gus curled up in a chair. Like Sean really? hid in the fireplace by standing in front of it. <laughs> like, and putting his arms out like the mantle. It was, it was silly, um, like absurd silliness. At least they finally end up under the desk. I mean, it was like, come on, the guys. The desk doesn't have a back on it. You could it literally did. no, it doesn't. It has oh like a God. couple inches on top, but then the whole bottom of it is completely I open. I just wonder how the guy didn't hear them because they're like, ow, and they're hitting or each other. See them. Crazy, crazy, or look crazy. under the desk okay. as soon as they started bumping their head on it and stuff. But the yeah. guy clearly doesn't find what he's looking for. Sean does notice a speck on his shoe, um, but he doesn't find what he's looking for. But they do know that now there's a safe there. Yeah, the guy did this, find a safe, and he was looking for presumably the combination somewhere written down. This is the other great scene here because oh, yeah. this is where Sean. <laughs> Sean says, go ahead. He wants Gus to crack the safe. And Gus is like, I can't do that, Sean. And he goes, what, you're 36 months into a subscription to Modern Safe Crackers magazine? (laughs) Isn't working? He goes, it's time. It's time to go pro fingers. (laughs) You said that completely wrong. No, no. He said, it's time to go pro fingers. And Gus, well, but Gus said, I'm an amateur. He calls him fingers as a nickname. (laughs) Gus says, 
I'm just an amateur. And he goes, it's time to go pro, fingers. Then after right. that, he follows it up with, twist it up. <laughs> and and yes. the, the enthusiasm in his voice it yeah. just sells it even more. Yeah. And Gus makes his attempts at opening this, this safe very theatrical. He walks oh, up yeah. to it like with this nice stare and he like leans forward into it and like whips his coat back like uh-huh. twice. <laughs> Uh-huh. And then he like he does this pose and he like brings his hand in close to it like he's going for, to grab it really quickly. Uh, well, but he just, doesn't get he doesn't silliness. get in. His efforts do not get him in. But that's when they, he they noticed the picture of this woman that's in the office, and it was her measurements that were the combination. So they do get into the safe and find some uh, if, some information like a ledger that essentially shows that someone was stealing money well, it's from. Specifically, the lodge. two copies of the ledger. You have a real one and you have a doctored one. So, oh, yeah. um, whoever was the the bookkeeper, um, Arthur essentially stole their books or like made his own copies of it or something. But um, they were able to see from the perceived donations versus the actual donations, and then the, using that they could determine how much was being skimmed. So, yeah, now and they Gus know was what's able. Going on. Well, Gus was also able to identify that the person who did the writing was a doctor because it's like charting information. It's in like, like charting, shorthand like, and right. scribbled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he knows that it was a doctor. So now they've got to figure out, okay, well, which doctor did this? So yeah. I, I love the next scene. We have Lassie interrogating his father-in-law. Irving. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I like that he weird. finally stood up to him. Well, we got to set the scene first. So – um, okay. from exposition, we find out that they've been sitting there for hours and Irving is just either giving him lip or not talking. And, um, event and eventually Laster gets, you know, gets his courage and he's like, you know what? I'm a cop. And so he's like, he like gets in Irving's face and he's like, you know what? You're what we call a hostile witness. This is my territory. And mm-hmm. here we're going to play by my rules. So you tell me what I want to know. And or we're going to make things very difficult in your life. And I th- it was, yeah, it was very awesome seeing him stand up for yeah, himself. Yeah, you really could see the like back. the shift in yeah. in, in his father in law. You could you could see the shift. It was almost like, okay, I got some respect for you now. All right. And they find out. So Lassie was wanting to know why. How did Arthur pass <laughs> Irving in the the order of? Uh, uh, hierarchy. Of hierarchy, yeah, and how did hierarchy. he pass him in the hierarchy? And because Irving was second in line, and Irving tells him that Arthur was a friend of his, and he recently told him about some medical issues he was having, and how it was very important for him to to be in this position. So he essentially said, "I I don't know how he talked to the other two people into letting him skip them, but I gave him my blessing to skip me." Because it's very important to him. Yeah. Which I thought was really nice. And it showed a touching side of Irving. That he, yeah. he has that. Um, so yeah. I thought that was cool. And it leads them to their next clue. Um, now that they know how Arthur was passed. And now that the, the guys have the information about the bookkeeping. All they have to look at is one of the other two people. To see who is the who's the bookkeeper. Who keeps track of the money. And that leads them to Dr. Downs. They go to Dr. Down's office, and despite Gus's attempts, he's not doing a good job sweet-talking the receptionist. But while he's attempting, uh, Sean goes and sort of looks through the office. And, and gets him very distracted. Yes. And <laughs> he, like, wants to weigh himself. It's like, it's I love thing. that one. And that yeah. one in particular. Because he steps on the scale, and he starts to slide it, and he's like, no, 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 stop. No. Like, he, he policed himself. <laughs> like, focus. Focus. <laughs> And so he finds a couple of things. He finds like these gloves, like this imprint that he noticed on Dr. Down's hand before, like a um, like impressions that were made by something. It's like the elastic, like this hatching yeah. elastic print. Yeah. And then he also notices the uh, the the handwriting um, on one of like the doctor's appointment book or whatever. He notices his handwriting. And he, I mean, he pretty much, they well, also he also sees an article. There he is. Yeah, he sees an article on the wall that's been framed uh, from where Dr. Downs has done work in other countries and 
and use for making vaccines venom. powdered or making right. powdered forms of vaccines, vaccines. Mm-hmm. which could mm-hmm. certainly have that venom in them. So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you got to wrap us up now. Sh- now look, I almost called you Sean. This is what happens to me. This is what happens. I think it's a compliment. You, I'll ride with it. I'll ride with it. You mm-hmm. so often remind me of him. So, okay. So we're back right. at the lodge now for wrap the wrap up. up. The, the lodge itself is having its uh, redo mm-hmm. of the ceremony. And this time they're putting, you know, the second in line, Arthur, in charge of the place. And Sean comes in during the ceremony and kind of interrupts it as he does. And he gives them the breakdown. So what happened was Dr. Downs was the one in charge of the donations and the finances for the lodge. And he kept separate ledgers, um, one with the real donations and one with the donation after he skimmed a couple thousand dollars off of each donation. Arthur was uh, doing some research one day and he found out what he was doing. Um, Apparently his medical issues were real. And uh, they never said that it wasn't. So he essentially used this to blackmail Dr. Downs and uh, for the sole purpose, really, of skipping ahead in this order. It didn't really seem like Dr. Downs really cared about the hierarchy and wanting to be like move up in the, the, the club. But he didn't want to like he wanted to make sure that his secret didn't get out. So right. he ended up using his uh powdering abilities to take the the poison turn it into a vaccine or i'm sorry take the poison and turn it into a powder and then he lined the inside of the hood for the ceremony with the powder to poison him so this one this one just gets this one is just weird for me yeah. i mean um uh one well, touching let's finish part wrapping there is up. one let's, other part yeah there is one other part the episode lassie and them pull up and Sean passes it off to Lassie at the end, and when he walks past him, he gives him a little spank on the butt, um, which I thought was kind of funny, because Lassie mm-hmm. kind of just jolts forward a little bit and accepts it. And mm-hmm. uh, But yeah, he he, passes, he, he he gives him the credit for it, which is good. I'm not saying it's not good. It's just the way this whole case went was weird right. for me. I agree. Well, we okay, we also go back to the psych office and then Henry is trying to like he comes and he's like are we gonna go we could go this weekend on the trip or whatever and <laughs> yeah so yeah, we did yeah. get a touching moment here so they mm-hmm. do play a little joke on him um, at the at the very end but in the beginning part uh, Sean essentially gets real with him and he's like so why did you really quit the lodge like why didn't you want to be a part of it anymore and Henry ends up telling him that his marriage was falling apart and the lodge was taking too much of his time and he had to choose. And he ultimately chose his family. He said, mm-hmm. I realized the only real membership that mattered was family. And Sean kind of just took it as the touching moment. And I think he got a little more respect for him there too. And then they heard the tapping and I guess they, the guys... Gus and Sean took the portraits of Sean and Henry from the lodge and hung them in the psych office. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're Henry equally bad to next it. to each other. And tells him to keep it there. That way I'm always watching you. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. Okay. All right, Matt. Let's talk about our thoughts about this episode. I, I don't... I, I don't like this it. This is not a favorite of mine. There's a couple... Uh, funny little pieces. There's a couple little one-liners that are witty. Um, we do get some more background from Lassiter, like with the whole his relationship with his father-in-law. Um, a little bit more about his <laughs> wife, like a very like a, like a sentence or two maybe about Victoria, his wife, and and how she feels about him. But. I just, it doesn't do it for me. Like, I I don't know. Part of it was the theme and the crime. There were so many holes in this one's plot that it just made me just not care about the the crime part at all. Between the issue in the beginning with them actually catching up to Henry after they, like, were in a restaurant when they saw him. Then there's also the one with um, him, I guess, quickly, like, so quickly joining the lodge, like, right in the middle of this whole incident. Like, are they really going to bring in new members when one just maybe got murdered? 
uh, the issue with the in the office of the victim's house, um, how the guy didn't see them or hear them at all. They guessed the combination was her measurements. Like it wasn't even a birthday or something. Like it was just her measurements. Like I don't know. It it was just a little. It was a little much for me. A little spotty for you. Yeah. Also, the way that this went, Lassiter should have been able to figure this out more. Like this wasn't a very difficult case. Um, I mean, there was literally two or three well, and people it, and behind. Nothing, nothing behind that the... Sean did was psychically figured out. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing it was, was all even very He was just a def- detect. He was just looking into stuff. You and I could have solved this case. Like this was a yeah. very easy well, case. Of course we, of course we would. I mean, literally, just look. Who wants to kill him? Oh, maybe it's right. one of the other two or three people behind. And then when Arthur tells you that, you go to there. I mean, the the, the biggest break was the with the books, like the cooked books. But mm-hmm. like, I don't know how they necessarily would have found that out. I mean, they might have had to make a leap to figure that out. But as soon as Sean and Gus knew, I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, okay. All right. How many pineapples? Let me check our scale here. Okay, while you do that, I'm going to talk about why I didn't like this episode. It's not my favorite episode either. I, too, have issues with the plot. But in terms of, like, you talked about the relationship between Lassie and his father-in-law and learning a little bit about that. If there are any relationships having to do with the show that I don't want to know about, this falls under that category. I never needed to know about yeah. this. This was not character development that I wanted. You've like, said this in the past about Gus with the whole, or something about Mira thing. Mm-hmm. And it's 100% right. Um, if you missed this episode and you didn't know this about Lassie, it, it makes no never difference. Comes up. It never comes up again and it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't I, um, matter at yeah. all. I agree. It doesn't change how Lassiter behaves. It doesn't. I there was no Chief in this episode. There was no McNabb in this episode. There's also there no was, development as to why um, Irving didn't like Lassiter. They didn't really say right, anything about it was what just, happened that was bad. It could have been like just this singular episode out there. There was nothing. No interaction between Sean and Jules that was good. There was no Not a ton between I, Gus it just and Sean. Wasn't I mean? I guess Gus the so, one involved in trying to sell stuff the whole time yeah i guess the one good thing well maybe there's two um one is that lassie needed their help and he got it and the other one so i mean like they it's good when he depends on them a little bit but i don't think he needed them in this case good detective could have solved it then uh, and also the little bit of positive interaction between Henry and Sean at the end. So maybe that was their intention with this episode was to do some some Henry Sean development of some type. But I just don't think it hit the mark. I, I just feel like they missed it here. So and it's, you know, Steve Franks and they usually bring it so much more than they brought the it here. There were a couple here funny moments, though, is going to be whether or not I would skip it. If I was binging the show, like if I was watching it, would I skip the episode? I have gone back and forth about that. I probably would leave it on, but it would be left on when I'm not really watching it. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking too. That's two where pineapples. I went. I landed it too. You're going to? Okay. Yeah. Going I don't to. think I would skip the episode. There's nothing that makes me mm-hmm. upset. Um, There are still occasionally funny jokes in there. There's funny little scenes yeah. that pop up. So Yeah. I'm comfortable with two. Dislodged gets two pineapples for both of us. Yeah. Again, we agree. We've agreed on the what last is happening? last three episodes now. I think we just really know what's good and what's not good. We have to just accept that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I'm curious. Okay. Do you have a come on, son moment for Dislodged? I have all of the moments, even though it's not my favorite one. I do, too. Uh, for come on, Amazing. son, it's when Irving crafts on Lassie. Yes. I don't like that. Okay, yeah, mine was a little broader, bad, especially in the beginning, because Lassiter just is like he it stresses him. Like this is a weak, mm-hmm. like a touchy spot for him. Mine was a little broader. I just put his rudeness 
in general. He was rude to Sean and Gus. He was rude to like he didn't oh, have see, any reason to be that rude towards Lassie because there were some yeah. things where I really felt bad for Lassie. Yeah. Like I felt for him in a couple scenes. Uh, what about a wait for it? What do you got? <laughs> Something happens that we're waiting to find out about when they put the camera on Henry's portrait. That was it for me. <laughs> I wanted to find out what in the heck. Why? Was he undercover and doing something there? Was he actually a member? Like, I needed to know. See, that's the other thing that bothers me is you don't even know what this lodge does. Right. Like, why right. did Henry even want to join it to the beginning? Yeah. Why does Lassie want to join it? Uh, yeah. yeah. What Whatever. was your wait for it? Whatever. Uh, my wait for it was when... Um, what were I wanted to know how well Gus did on sales? Yeah, he was killing okay. it, and I really wanted to hear like, oh, like maybe even in next episode, like, man, last month I killed it, yeah, um, or or something like that. I would love to have known, like, that's what I was. If curious they could have wrapped what episode, if they could have wrapped the episode with like maybe Gus a week going, later or something. Man, I won an award from my sales last month or something like that. You uh, know, maybe this is where he gets the massage the the massage package oh, award. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Actually, I wonder if that time's up because he said he's been holding on to that for like two or three years or something. That would be amazing if that timed up. But I would. Yeah. Uh, what about an all yeah moment? Something that happened that we were excited about. I was excited that Lassie went to Sean and Gus for help. That he okay. like let himself be vulnerable enough to say, I need you guys here. I didn't quite get excited, but it, it was nice to see. So I, mm -hmm. I, I understand that, I guess. Um, for me, it was at the end whenever Lassie comes in during the wrap up and Sean hands off the credit to him and gives him like the, the pound. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I really liked it. Uh, I thought it was quite a touching moment when Sean like set him up and let him had take it. That's um, a good one. So, yeah, that was mine. Um, Henry's lesson we kind of covered at the end. Yeah. I, yeah. um, I, I liked it. It was good. Um, I realized the only real membership that mattered was family. It was family. Yeah. It's a good Henry lesson. Exactly. Uh, where's the pineapple? I didn't find Not one. Not there. I checked online. I didn't see one on there either. Yeah, I mean, I looked. I looked on shirts. I looked on the plates when they were eating at the cafe in the beginning. There, I, I feel like there should have been one in the uh, the emblem, like on the center of the floor for Ooh, the lodge. That would have been hilarious. That would have been so good. Yeah, I thought I was looking. I was like, is it one of those symbols? Is that a pineapple? Yeah. No, no, no. Nope. I'll see it. Um, the only silly nickname was when they were at the doctor's office and Gus called Sean William Zane. Yep. Did you? And then he later that? called him Billy. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Favorite quotes. I had two. Okay. Um, oh, we're going to agree. We're going to agree on one. Really? Go ahead. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Probably going to agree. All right. So favorite quotes. Uh, he is the only suspect we have. He tried to hate me to death. <laughs> and then I also had, it's time to go pro fingers. Yep. Twisted up. Time to go pro, <laughs> fingers. Yep, I liked it. That was funny. Are you ready for the pop culture references? Uh, yes, yeah. Give us a shot. Okay. The first reference is Chuck from The Wonder Years. And that was the sitcom The Wonder Years that ran from 1988 to 1993. Oddly enough, Dulé is now in the reiteration of The Wonder Years. But Chuck was played by none other than Andy Berman in 19 episodes of the show. And the portrait really was of him. Matthew already covered the little, the little bonus there that all the por portraits were crew members. The second one was William Zane or Billy Zane. It's a famous actor known for Back to the Future, tons of 80s TV, the movie Tombstone, Twin Peaks. He was in several, or many episodes of Twin Peaks and also on Titanic, the movie. And then he was also in the last episode of Psych. Uh, Tom Hanks was the next one in The Terminal. Terminal was a 2004 movie, obviously starring Tom, uh, Tom Hanks, about a man who was displaced and who lived in JFK Airport. Highlights Magazine, they reference when going into the doctor's offices. It's a magazine for kids that's been around since 1946. It is always in doctor's offices, particularly pediatricians. Um, a bonus, uh, well, also another pop culture reference was when Henry said to Sean, you can't handle the truth. 
That is a famous line from the movie A Few Good Men, which was a huge hit for Tom Cruise and Demi Moore and Kevin Bacon and and Jack Nicholson. So many good actors in that movie. Uh, But it was from 1992, but famous line from that movie. Also, just as a side note and a little nod was at one point, did you notice, Matthew, that uh, when they were introducing some of the doctors... One of them was uh, had the last name Nigam, and yes. I thought, oh, well, that's kind of cute. They did a little nod to to mm-hmm. uh, to the writer there, Anupam. But, yeah, Anupam Nigam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's all I've got. There weren't a lot of pop culture references in this episode. wasn't wasn't very pop culture heavy. But beware for next week. It's gonna be a long <laughs> list. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, how does the episode hold up over time? Do, is, does it feel dated at all? What do you think? Well, technologically speaking, no. I feel like the premise of it was a little bit dated. It's not that I don't think like secret societies exist, because I do. I do believe that they do. No, there's just been better versions of this done. Yeah, I I don't. I think I they know. should have leaned harder into this and maybe mm-hmm. even made this a Halloween episode. Right. Um, I think that they definitely should have leaned harder into the cult theme. I, I think it would have been so much more interesting if mm-hmm. there was like maybe this possibility of it being not poison, but a demon or something like like, like some. It, um, wait, you know, what's so funny about what you're saying right now is earlier when you were talking about that. In my mind, I'm going, James Roday Rodriguez would have loved to write an episode. You know, he loves the horror stuff. Mm-hmm. And yep. he like would have done a really good job with this. A cultist group. To, like, they, like everybody there maybe thinks that they did something wrong. or I, don't right. know, I, I definitely think this idea has, it could have been done better here. And it's mm-hmm. definitely been done better since. But so, this one, not so But much. yeah, nothing else yeah. I don't think really stands out about it. but. It definitely was weaker. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of excited for next week because next week we are going to be discussing season two, episode 15, Black and Tan, A Crime, Crime of, of Fashion. Fashion. Oh, I can't I wait for that one. It's so love good. This episode. It's I'm such so a good. excited. Oh. This is like probably right up there with me um, with like lights. Kim Kim Hama's Hama's studio. studio and like those episodes. It's It's up there for me. I love it. Melinda likes her man to shine. (laughs) The lavender scalpel oil. (laughs) Oh, I love that episode. Oh, it's such a good one. Such a good one. So, well, yeah. So that's next week. Mm -hmm. So, yep. All right, guys. uh, Make sure you check us out on our Facebook group. Make sure you check us out on our subreddit. Um, I still am doing the occasional trivia post there. So if you follow us, mm-hmm. you might see one of our things pop up. And you can always go back and give your answer for the the past ones. I think we have eight on there now. Um, and we also post there um, whenever we are releasing a new episode. So you can check us out on any of our social media platforms if you want to stay connected based on whatever one you use. And you can email us questions or comments at thepsychpodcast at gmail.com. Until next week, guys, thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a great week. See ya. Yeah, twist it up. (laughs) Bye. That's awful.